Ah, the Xbox One, Japan's least favorite Xbox. And that's saying something. While its peers, the PS4 and the Wii U, have both seen big pushes towards mods and emulators, the Xbox One has been historically neglected. Partly this is because the Xbox One was pretty secure. I've seen people say more than once that the Xbox One is impossible to exploit. But also, we can't ignore the fact that there just hasn't been a lot of motivation. Microsoft explicitly allowed users to run Homebrew on the console with dev mode, which is one of the primary motivations for modding, and they also went out of their way to port many of their major franchises like Halo and Forza to PC, which is one of the primary motivations for emulators. Uh, that'll be really good for the upcoming Halo game. Um, that's one of the only reasons I buy an Xbox. But that doesn't mean there's been no motivation. In January 2023, developer Tyler Jakes, also known as Vital Coda, began development of a translation layer originally called Expo and Emu, but later renamed Windorango after the Xbox One's internal codename. The goal of Windorango was simple, getting Xbox One games running on PC. And compared to more traditional emulator projects, they've got some pretty unique advantages and challenges to doing so. But before we get into all of that, we gotta get our sponsor out of the way, so huge thanks to PCBWay. Recently, PCBWay was kind enough to give me a tour of their factory, and I was blown away at how much work goes into making PCBs. It's easy to assume with how neat and tidy they arrive that the whole thing is just automated. And sure, there are a lot of expensive looking machines, but there are also a lot of real people working to make sure every PCB is printed perfectly. It really made me appreciate all of the work that goes into something as small as an Xbox mod chip or controller adapter. By simply uploading Gerbers to their website, you set in motion a huge process with so much technology and expertise behind it, it honestly makes my head spin. I'm amazed they can do it as cheaply as they do. So if you're ever in the need to manufacture hardware like this, I highly recommend going to PCBWay.com. Look out for a factory tour coming soon, and now back to the Xbox One. Now, let's talk about this term translation layer. If you're into tech, you're probably aware of Wine, the thing that lets you run Windows apps on not Windows. You also might be aware of its recursive acronym, Wine is not an emulator, and indeed, that is true. It too is a translation layer. While colloquially we may refer to an emulator as something that allows software from a different platform to run, an emulator has a specific definition as something that simulates hardware, and usually more specifically simulates a device's CPU. Translation layers generally don't emulate any hardware at all. All code is run directly and natively on your host CPU, which, as you can imagine, only works if your computer has a CPU compatible with the software you're trying to run. In this case, the Xbox One is indeed x86-64 based like the vast majority of PCs. But even on the same CPU, a game or application will still occasionally need to talk to the underlying operating system, and that's where a translation layer comes in. In the case of Wine, it replicates all of Windows' system calls and translates them to equivalent calls for Linux, and that's essentially the same principle that WinDurango is going for. This is not only a lot quicker and easier to develop, but also leads to a lot less performance overhead than low-level emulation of the hardware. Despite this, WinDurango quickly stalled due to lack of publicly available resources, both official and unofficial, on the Xbox One's inner work. Kings. The biggest problem with any attempt at running Xbox One games not on the Xbox One was that without any mods for the system itself, there was no established way to actually obtain game data. For over 10 years, no game disc or digital download had ever been dumped, and there was a lot of concern about long-term preservation of software released on the Xbox One. And in the case of Wind Durango, how can you translate something that you don't even have access to? Well, all of that changed in July of 2024 with collateral damage. Collateral Damage is an Xbox One kernel exploit that allows a user to gain system privileges. In reality, it's actually a Windows exploit going back over 8 years, but as a testament to how similar they are, the Xbox One inherited it too. In reality, there had been at least one, if not more, earlier Xbox One kernel exploits, but nothing was ever made public so most people weren't even aware of them. Collateral Damage was the first time the community as a whole attained system access, and coupled with an additional exploit found for the Xbox's game OS, it was finally possible for the community to dump Xbox One games and they seized the opportunity to preserve and take a closer look at them after all this time. One of these games was particularly interesting to the community, the Xbox One edition of Minecraft. You might be thinking, seriously? What could possibly be special about the Xbox One version of Minecraft? Or perhaps you're thinking, isn't the Xbox One edition the same Bedrock edition that's already available on Windows? And the answer is no. There are actually two separate releases of Minecraft for the Xbox One. The most recent one, yes, is just a port of the Bedrock edition, but the original release was a completely different codebase developed externally by Scottish developer 4J Studios. This version was ported to most of the mainstream consoles at the time, earning them all the unofficial title Minecraft Legacy Console Edition. Yeah, the Minecraft Extended Universe is more complicated than you think. The decision to unify the console and mobile versions into what is now called the Bedrock edition probably made a lot of business sense for Mojang, but remains controversial for players. 
The Legacy Console Edition contains exclusive features and differences, and to this day, the general consensus is that it was a more polished and graphically superior console experience. For some, it's even their favourite way to play Minecraft, surpassing the original Java version. Having secured the Xbox One Edition's game files, and realising it was the closest they had to a real PC port, the community set about trying to get it to run on PC. Surprisingly, Xbox One games can be installed on Windows out of the box, using the same mechanism that Windows Store apps are installed. They're even theoretically launchable, but in practice, they don't actually run. There needs to be some degree of translation to actually get Xbox One games to work. It was then that the Minecraft fans discovered the work-in-progress Wind Durango, which had just recently been revived after nearly a year of lying dormant, and decided to join forces. But it turns out they weren't the only ones doing this exact thing. Around this time, a second Xbox One translation layer was announced, XWine 1, no relation to wine. It garnered immediate attention for already claiming to have as many as six commercial games confirmed to be fully playable. This was exciting news, they were way ahead of Wind Durango, and before long were posting videos of Forza Horizon 2, a game that still remains an Xbox exclusive. More recently, they've even showcased support for the Kinect. But apart from announcements on Twitter and videos on YouTube, none of XYN1 has been made available to the public, not even in the form of source code, though they confirm it will be open sourced along with their initial public release. While some people are frustrated by the lack of anything tangible coming out of XYN1, it seems like the team just wants it to be mostly functional before putting it out there, which as a developer I do understand. There's a lot of hype around this, and a huge influx of users could end up just slowing things down in the long run, so even though it goes against the grain of open source projects these days, I do get the impulse to hold off. It looks great from the videos, apparently they've even gotten it working on Linux, which is great news for Steam Deck owners and arch nodes like myself, but so far that's all we know about XYN1. There have also been other stabs at an Xbox One translation layer, but most of them either got abandoned before making significant progress, or their work just got merged into XYN1. Wind Durango, however, has remained an independent project, but with a lot of consulting from people working on XYN1. So how do Xbox One games work? You may be aware of Microsoft's UWP, or Universal Windows Platform Initiative, to provide one standard platform between Windows, Windows Mobile, the HoloLens, and yes, the Xbox. You've probably noticed parts of the Windows UI becoming bigger and more touch-friendly and that's all been part of the same push. In Xbox land, UWP-based games are known as SRAs, or Shared Resource Apps. However, game developers also had the option for more traditional lower-level access with ERAs, or Exclusive Resource Apps. The bigger games usually went for that lower-level access, so those are the games that Wind Durango and XYN1 target. But these function quite differently from UWP apps. They share the same packaging system, which is why they can be easily registered as apps on Windows, but otherwise they have very different expectations of the OS they're running. In fact, each ERA game technically ships with its own operating system, referred to as Title OS, rather than just running on the Xbox's System OS. Title OS also contains some components from Windows Phone, so I guess it never really died. Throughout the Xbox One's lifespan, there were several versions of Tidal OS that aren't immediately compatible with each other, and the version that ships with a specific game is, well, up to the game. So essentially, to achieve a high level of compatibility, you have to have translations for every single one. Interestingly, as another sign of the Xbox One's Windows heritage, doing these translations mostly amounts to patching DLL files that come with the game. In theory, that's all you need to do to get the games launching, at least on Windows. You don't technically need any UI like you'd expect from traditional emulators. However, Wind Durango is working on a UI to provide a much smoother experience with the patching process, as well as to help manage save games, game mods, and auto updates. And yeah, all of this work opens up the door to Xbox One game mods for the first time too. Likewise, they also have to have translations for the Xbox One's variant of Direct3D11, known as D3D11 X. While D3D 11X shares a lot of functions with its Windows counterpart, it also has a lot of Xbox extensions, many of which are challenging to implement on Windows because they were written specifically with the Xbox One's GPU in mind. I mean, think about it, if you know every user is going to have exactly the same GPU, it's a waste of time and performance to have a lot of separation between the game and the hardware. This is a similar issue that CXBX, a translation layer for the original Xbox, has with its graphics system. While on the surface, the OG Xbox seems to have a lot in common with a conventional Windows PC, for performance reasons, many Xbox games have native Xbox GPU instructions embedded into them since there is no reason for them to support any other GPU. Unless your PC happens to have the Xbox's GPU, there's nothing it can do with those instructions. You could write software to process those low-level GPU instructions and reproduce the results on different hardware, but that wouldn't be called a translation layer, that would be called a hardware emulator. Even the parts of D3D11X that are shared with the Windows counterpart still often differ in behaviour and even sometimes in function signature. And none of it is binary compatible, meaning the whole thing needs translation, at least to some degree. And much like Tidal OS, there are multiple incompatible versions of D3D11X. 
XYN1 supports no less than 13 different versions, and that's just what they found so far in their testing. Some games even introduce breaking changes without changing the version number, making it even harder to figure out what each game expects from the OS. And just to complicate things further, there's also D3D12X, which even on Windows functions very differently from D3D11. Thankfully, not many Xbox One games utilize D3D12X, but the point is, there's a lot going on here, and I haven't even started on the Xbox One's custom hardware audio processor. Basically, while translation layers or high-level emulators like this have a lot of benefits and may seem like an easy win, they can actually be deceptively complicated to get a high level of compatibility with, and in some ways, it can just be easier to emulate the underlying hardware since, unlike the software, that never changes. But in Minecraft's case, it, for the most part, doesn't use any of the more obscure D3D11 extensions, making it an unintentionally ideal first game to try getting running. And on January 9th, 2025, Wind Durango finally booted into Minecraft Xbox One Edition. At first, there were bugs and glitches, but they were quickly resolved, and by the next day, they were in-game. Since then, they've also gotten audio, saved games, and split-screen working. As Wind Durango has received more interest and attention, it's gradually started catching up to the compatibility claimed by XY and 1, making solid progress in simple 2D games like Sonic Mania and the Escapists, and on the way to getting Forza 2 working too. If you're interested, Wind Durango is open source and fully usable if you have an Xbox One game dump. However, expect the vast majority of the library to not work at this time. Windurango is also currently only available on Windows 10 and 11, but like XY1, they're also working on getting this stuff running on Linux too. So now what? Well, Windurango is looking for help. This is an enormous effort, so if you're an experienced C++ developer and interested in contributing, they'd love to hear from you and recommend joining their Discord server to get involved, link in the description. Or if you're a C-sharp developer, Windurango UI could also use some extra contributors to help make the smoothest possible experience for users. As for XYN1, since it's currently a closed source project, you can't make any direct contributions to it, though as you can see, that hasn't slowed it down at all. If you are knowledgeable on the topic and reached out to them, I'm sure they'd be willing to accept more help too, but otherwise you can follow their Twitter, Blue Sky, and YouTube page for further updates on progress and, hopefully in the relatively near future, a formal release. Say what you will about the Xbox One, it's exciting to see the community rally around preserving its game library. Despite many high-profile ports to Windows, there are still significant titles like Halo 5 that have been left stranded on the console. Within a year's time, we may be playing that on our PCs and Steam Decks. It's very exciting to see, but keep in mind it's all very much in development. Like I said, I can understand why XY1 is keeping things on the down low so they don't get swamped with demands from users at such an early stage, while when Durango has chosen to make their development public, that shouldn't be confused with it being ready to use. Everyone is working on this for free, out of nothing but love for a neglected console and the community surrounding it, and it's going to be an uphill battle that will need as much help as they can get, so I want to urge everyone not to overwhelm them with more work, even if it's just out of excitement for what they're doing. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was just kind of an introduction slash overview of the current state of X Xbox One emulation, but there's a lot more to talk about, so let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a deeper dive. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.